Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Meet the Musicians in your neighborhood. Arlene, Arlene and I are already laughing and smiling. Um, as you can tell, our special guest tonight is Arlene Shiplett. Arlene plays second horn with the, uh, with the symphony. She's representing the horn section tonight. Carol did a wonderful blog that you can see on the Saskatoon website. Uh, Taryn, have you seen this? Arlene, Taryn did this uh, guitar hero thing with Beethoven's Violin Concerto, the third movement. It's amazing. It's on YouTube. And okay. um, and James just had a baby about a month ago. Yeah. So hopefully Holy he's getting you. some Holy. some sleep there. So uh, Arlene, welcome to the program. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderfully. This is fantastic to do. Good, good. And um, we we're just chatting for a few minutes before the before this all started. <laughs> and how's your life been for the last couple of months? Well. It's been really different. Um, I went from having seven employers down to two, um, and I figured out the wonders of technology. And Zoom and I are best friends, nice. and I've loved it. I'm I'm happy. I have a whole ten students. We hang out at once a week. And one of my students, he actually signed up for twice a week lessons. Whoa! <laughs> I know. Yeah, and it's been wonderful. Everyone's improving so much, and I've taken the technology I used before and really took it out for a test drive. My students are using this program called Smart Music to practice with and perform with. And so we're we're getting ready for our year-end video recital. So we're going to videotape it all and put it into a file, upload onto like YouTube or wherever so we can okay. share it. So I've been doing that and I've been working at Kevin's at Music Craft. And nice. other than that, I've been, well, the first while was great. My husband took a month holidays oh, at great. the beginning of Okay. So I have two nicely renovated bathrooms. Oh. Yes. And, and he volunteered. Okay. And and you talking yes. about renovations and all that. Look at your setup behind oh, you. Oh, yes. Yes. So <clears throat> you can see some of the different things in my house. So we yeah. have my garden hose horn. I, this is all from doing my history of, of the horn okay. video. So I have my garden hose horn here. The conches I played. Okay. And then over the other shoulder is the natural horn that I played. And I did the Beethoven Sonata. And then my other horn's just over on the side. So I and, can just literally sit here and play. And Mark Turner wants to know what other instrument are you the only person in Saskatoon that plays? Oh, the Calliope. Yes. The Steam Organization Development Museum on. So I played that for 33 years. I was Canada's only professional steam calliope until they mothballed it in 2017. Fantastic. Yeah. What a what a, a badge of badge of honor. That's fantastic. You know, playing the world's loudest non-amplified instrument was really great. I had fantastic headphones okay. and it was a way to travel and see Saskatchewan from a semi and the thousands of tourists that we entertained and it was it was a blast. I wouldn't have traded Fantastic. any of that for the world. Wow, so, what an, what so an experience. Fun. So and, that I'm actually still looking for a recording, by the way. Anyone who's out there who has a recording of me on the Calliope playing Oh Canada, that would be great. You could send it to me. I'd love to share it with the Canada Together um, uh, website. And, you know, none of us can find one so far. We've found videos of me playing so many pieces, but... Oh, Canada came into my repertoire, I think somewhere around 2012. So that's a couple hundred gigs right there. Wow. And it'd be out. nice. It'd be nice to have a recording of it because you did it so many yeah. times. Exactly. Yeah. So often and we, none of us can believe we don't have a recording of it. So yeah. So anyone else has one. That's right. Anyone out there in any uh, town yeah. of Saskatchewan, if you have a recording of yes. Arlene so, playing the Calliope, yeah. please, please. As far as I can tell, the museum at no point is going to, you know, um, get it serviced and put it back on the road, unfortunately. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so that, this might be it. Yeah. This might be it. So I'm hoping someone can do it. It'd almost be cheaper at this point for them to repair it just so I can play the one song. But right. It needs, both, it needs two days of repairs. There you go. And with all of uh, you mentioned traveling to so many towns, uh, part of your job or one of your jobs, um, Arlene, right. you're, you're a, a woman of many jobs and different things. It's really exciting. Yeah. Um, you work for NACO. Uh, National Arts Center. Um, tell us about right. that. 
Sure. I'm a teaching musician with the Music Alive program, which means that I get the opportunity to travel through northern Saskatchewan going into rural schools, and we have different uh, programs. So I can go into your school, and I can teach you the music of R. Murray Schaefer, which is all soundscapes, and I teach the students and the teachers. I come in with a whole unit plan and extra resources, and then we 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 practice for the whole day. We learn all about music. And at the end of the day, we put on a live performance at, at the end. And then it's it's an ongoing experience if you just keep doing all the resources that come with it. So I do Armory Schaefer, uh, Beethoven, Vivaldi. And I'm also involved in their cross-cultural program, which means I can travel with a variety of Indigenous artists. So I've traveled with everyone from Jacob Pratt to Forest Eagle speaker to Zoe Roy. And uh, Walter McDonald White Bear from Calgary has come to Saskatchewan. And so I've had these great experiences wow. of doing these, especially the cross cultural one, like watching Zoe and I. So Zoe did one of her poems, and I performed a piece by Malcolm Forsyth at the same time. And we That's did, tough. it was so cool. And through Zoe, I learned a lot more about songwriting and learning how to rap. And now me being able to go out and teach rap how to write a rap song and rap with students is funny and there are no videos out there of me doing it i well, hide maybe maybe <laughs> maybe i hide at the back so you may hear my voice as we're doing the raps but yeah at this point i'm hoping there really aren't any videos of it because okay. no one really wants to see that so <laughs> it's a fantastic job i've been doing this since 2006 and then i got a Ms. Fridge role the other side of my job with them is something called the band intensive. So they gave me the opportunity to take uh, myself as the brass specialist and two specialists from St. John's Music, Brett uh, Gerard Weber and mm -hmm. Brett Graham. And we would go on the road and we would do workshops. And again, the same pre premise, go in and workshop the students and then put on a performance at the end of the day for the school and the community. And so we, again, got a chance to see quite a few different rural programs. And wow. that is set up for rural. So we went everywhere from Sturgis up to Meadow Lake and Loon Lake. And it's, again, it's really great. The students get a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with us. And yeah. It's really rewarding. Wow. Not only is it uh, rewarding for the students, but I'm sure for you for you as well and for everyone involved. Well, you mentioned Zoe. Well, Zoe is, is such a bundle of energy. She's incredible. And so many other people. Um you and I did well, one. With Gerard and Brett, they make me play. Oh, you know this Charlie Mingus tune, and I look at them blankly, and I go, <laughs> "Really? You want me to play what?" And so, and then, and so, I've learned so much about how to be collaborative, and yeah. watching them improvise has been amazing. And working with Forrest again, with Forrest being a, 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 a he's the true North Sound. So getting a chance to perform with him was wonderful because I took my French horn. He had his guitar. He would, he had a song and he said, okay, do what you want. And often I'll end up doing either like bass lines with it or just, you know, just filling in with his lines. And yeah, you know, I just let them play. And then whatever comes into my head, away I go. Fantastic. And then I write it down because I don't want to screw up with the performance. So right. I take, yeah. But that first time you're, you're winging it. I'm sure you're doing a great job. Um, yeah, it's that we, you and I did one in Harris, in Tessier yes. Harris which is really yeah. great. Um, that was a couple of years ago, I think it was. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah. 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 A few people um, have mentioned already on the chat. Um, they want to <laughs> see the rap videos. Megan wants to no. see it. Uh, no. Karen wants you to share rap right now with us. Um, <laughs> <No>. But <laughs> that was a definitive no. Um, but maybe afterward. And Megan wants yeah. to know, uh, do you have a favorite memory from a small community? Where's some place you've only been able to travel to because of work or teaching opportunities? Great. Well, you know, I ended up in Imperial, Saskatchewan in 1989. Where's that? Okay, south of, just south of uh, Watrous. So it was either, we and I, there were two things about that trip that really stuck in my mind, was that uh, we were we were playing. I was on, it was a Clypey gig. And this old lady came up and she just had tears running down her face because she remembered the Clypeys from her childhood. Oh. And it just really resonated with me that, you know, I brought back all these fond memories for her, thank goodness, because sometimes you either loved or hated the Clypey. And then I was standing there and it was a Saturday and I think it was the same gig. It was either that or we, were, we went from Imperial to the next town down the road. And 
I looked at my boss and said, I've never been to a sports day. And he said, how have you lived in Saskatchewan and never been to a small town sports day? And I said, oh, <laughs> this, it was so cool to experience small town life like that. Like that was like, that was so treasured. And then all the experiences of going up north, like, yeah. you know, to be in La Loche and to, to be on the beach at Buffalo Narrows and oh just look out and that scenery and just all that beautiful white sand. Just north of Buffalo Narrows, there's this beautiful white beach. Right. And dunes are up there and you just, you're out there and it's so neat how, how creative you become. It allows me to be so free to let music come into my mind that's not Hmm. on a page that I'm being paid to play. Right, right. And I'm so inspired. Every time I go up there, it's just wow. so amazing. Okay. And, and I think yeah. I think uh, you're probably one of only a few. I mean, even people from Saskatchewan, not a lot of people have been up to Buffalo Narrows. And, you know, you read yeah. about it in books and you see the, the incredible photos, but it's kind of hard to get yeah. to. And you're, you've been fortunate enough to... To make it up, yeah, to. and I actually got a chance to travel with Jill Turcott and uh, Kim De La Forest and Angie Tiesland, and I think that was 2005. And we actually flew to Comsol Portage, okay. so that's the highest settlement. So we did we did this fly-in thing where we hit that in Stony Rapids and Uranium City in one day. Wow! <laughs> yeah, and wow. it was. It was amazing, like to go into this little tiny building and perform at console, but you also had to portage everything from the, the right. plane, right? Yeah. Yeah. So thank goodness they had a quad there to haul like Angie's keyboard. But you yeah. know, so I'm dragging I took my garden hose horn, oh, my nice. natural horn, and my horn and a gig bag, which is I think I was a pack horse in a previous life, because it doesn't seem to be that big a deal for me to carry all this crap and right. lug it everywhere. So everyone gets used to seeing that, but um, that was so much fun. And when we hit Stony Rapids, like, you know, you hopped in the back of a half ton with the stuff and went to the school. That was, that was a blast. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. I, I'm, I'm going to ask you if you can, um, show us how to play the, how to play the, the instrument there. Um, this one? yeah, yeah, that would be great. Can you, can you show okay. us? Sure. So this is my garden hose horn. Yeah. So it's an F. So it's a little longer than a traditional F French horn because you had to physics wise, the, the piping is so narrow, right? Yeah. So it's not just 12 feet long and I'm just going to throw it <laughs> so I can throw it over there. And then I just put my mouthpiece in. Yeah. Line it up. Cause You've got I got it handy right there. Yeah. I have been, well, and I have to line up my wedge mouthpiece and then you can, you can actually do the right hand horn stylings, but um, you know, bending your hand, but, I tend to like, no, <laughs> after a while with this thing. So you can hear all the different harmonics you can hit. So I can play a little bit of the, the wow. Beethoven Sonata on it. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then you just go to the natural horn and you just, you're bending the notes with your hand and your lips and then, and the, it's so easy to play it on French horn with all those. Valves. That's right. Once, once you've done it on the garden hose, uh, French horn is easy. <laughs> yeah. So I take this with me to IMC. I, t I work at international yeah. music camp. So every, every year you have to do four master classes and they ask you to change them up every year. So imagine the games I make my students, I change the games every year, but they have to play the conches mm -hmm. behind me. So my students run all over the place creating bedlam, but they, they'll play games like hide and go seek. And we played Marco Polo with the French horn okay. with, with, with the conches we, and we make up games and it's a fascinating way for the students to learn the history of the yeah. French horn. Yeah. by doing it and then we have the contest to see who can play how many notes with no keys down on their own french horn the garden hose horn and this one goes through many lifetimes because you'll see all the tape here it's because normally i play this swinging it over my head like this <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so i tend to use i tend to wreck a lot of hose <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah so um, this one, and we just, this is, an, I'm just breaking in this one and figuring out the nodal, nodal points on, this is a new hose for me. So now I'm still getting used to where all the notes are. I can fake it, but you know, I'll probably have to actually, it sounds horrible. I might have to sit down and practice on it. Or I mean, <laughs> you, 
my god i i wish you were one of my teachers growing up you sound like so much fun i mean you are fun uh just as a member of the orchestra but my goodness the students and there's actually a couple of uh michael and stephanie um you have to read these afterwards uh they're talking about the whole rehearsal um stephanie's talking about how grateful she is that tutoring horn students at the school um you, there's already been a lot of comments thanking you for your amazing work oh, okay. And, kidding? It's fun. And, and some great questions. Ella is here again. Ella, I love that you're on every time, like so many of you. Um, she says, hi, Arlene. I hear that French horn is one of the most difficult musical instruments to play. What are the main challenges of mastering it? Okay. So number one, I, I'll just pick a finger. So I'm just going to take a normal breath. This is the number one challenge of the French horn you have to be able to figure out what note you're actually playing. So I can hit any one of these notes with no fingers. So I didn't try to hit 15 notes. There are 14 valve, actually 16 valve combinations on my French horn, right? Because mm -hmm. one and two equals three. I don't know if many people figured that out. So that's what became the 16. So you have all these combinations. And so you have to have this, really good sense of pitch you have to know mm -hmm. this is a right here you have to know that that's an a if you have perfect pitch sometimes you're doing i've had students with perfect pitch that have to go okay that was concert d and that's an a i'm reading and that's what i put down and yeah and i feel really bad for them right and they, yeah i can't imagine the jumps they do so that's the first challenge is being able to hear it then you have to be able to actually make your buzz so that you're able to go effortlessly from low to high without mangling your face up and down or making any really weird contortions. And, and then it's finding that sound, right? Mm -hmm. Like finding your tone. It's a lot of, I, I didn't even realize it. Like when I showed up at U of S, I didn't know any of this stuff. I just played on a single horn. I was 17 years old or 18 years old by that point. I played on a single horn. My hand was here. I didn't know my hand in the bell. And, but I could play high F off the staff and I was fearless. Nice. So my teacher took that and taught me, this is tasting the note. These are the pitches. This is tone. Well, he wasn't, I mean, I learned tone over time because when I started, I sounded like a screaming elephant <laughs> and, <laughs> and I can still do the screaming elephant sound if I want it. But I think I think you're uh, you you hit it with uh, you're fearless. Horn players have to be fearless because you have to be, so yeah. much of the repertoire you are exposed, and you've <laughs> got to go for it. And so you do. And there's such exposed solos on the horn, and you're sitting back there, and you think about that the next time we play a piece, and you know it's all really quiet. Or if you program Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony, and that second movement, those strings come in, it's quiet yes it's back there and you're sitting there going i got seven and a half measures <laughs> i gotta breathe i gotta not freak out and i'm the person sitting beside the person playing it going don't move That's you right. don't move just you just you don't breathe yeah you don't do anything like That's it right. is the most amazing thing and then this glorious sound comes out and beautiful that payoff you know yeah. as a horn player you know and the fact that we get to move from all these different genres, right? Mm -hmm. From you can hear the horn in rock music, you can hear it in pop, you can hear it in jazz. And then the fact that we get to play orchestra and yeah. band. Yeah. It's great. If you're and, a kid, the world's your oyster. Oh, you can be and busy. It's, and it's such a beautiful, beautiful sound. And and Don <laughs> McLean uh, wants to wants to know what is your favorite memory concert or concert in the brass section of the SSO? Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know. I love the Pines of Rome. That was great. I have to say it's got to be Mahler when we did the Mahler. Hmm. Like that was, that was really intense. That was really cool. I, you know, I spent so much time preparing to play Mahler 5 and just went, wow. And getting a chance to play some of those big works are yeah. just amazing. I think, and then there was another gig. What was that? We did the 100th anniversary of Saskatchewan. We did this thing at Sastel Center. They combined the two orchestras. That was really a cool experience. Mm. Right? You mean with, As a horn player. You mean with the with RSO the and the SSO? Horn. Yeah. Okay. So they the first, the first and second horn from 
Regina played with the first and second of Saskatoon and it was great. I had a wonderful time. I got a chance to sit beside Eldon Ike, who's a, a bassoon player. And that was, that was really cool to see us do something that spectacular, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And just a chance to play that. But some of those big works. Oh yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. Well, it's just, I mean, you mentioned Mahler and there, <laughs> first yeah. of all, I mean, the, the <laughs> size of, of, of any of those, symphonies i mean Mahler two has 10 horns and yeah exactly you know, you know yeah. so it's it's just extraordinary um and to yeah. have that not only your part but 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 playing in a section of 10 and then there's usually yeah. six or eight trumpets and you know all these things the whole brass yeah. section and yeah like when we get to do like say like the planets with all seven horn parts covered or maybe eight if you have an assistant first that's yeah. Yeah. oh my god that's, hmm. that's beautiful. I love when we also get to do the SYO concert too with the students coming in. Yeah. And you Personally, work... I, rarely, I rarely play well because I'm listening to my horn students. Right. Play. I, yeah. And up until last year, I was the SYO brass coach. And now Don McLean Bellick and Dee McNeil are doing it. Mm -hmm. And that was really, that was, it was so satisfying to hear these students get up there and play. Like last year, I'm, I'll never forget that when we handed sam here's first horn oh i know it's thursday but you can learn it how hard could this possibly be and he played the concert saturday it was just fun fantastic fantastic yeah having students like that that was those are great memories for me yeah in the, in the symphony. and talking about a student uh being a student you grew up in saskatoon is that right no actually i grew up in north battleford in north battleford wonderful okay one of those people like Ross Almer and all these other people yeah. have come out, Gary Redford. And there's, so there's a lot of musicians. Uh, John Thrower came out of North Battleford and, and a bunch of the guys from the Northern Pikes, like Ross Nicofork and I went to school together and Corey Hildebrand. Okay. So, yeah. So there's, there's this tradition of band in North Battleford. Right. And, and it was very strong when I came through. And so I actually belonged to two bands when I was a kid. Okay. So, and it was it was a blast. I learned to sing in choir. I didn't go for vocal lessons because I had a great choir teacher. And just that wealth of music that was in North Battleford at that time. Oh, it was fantastic. I had an amazing piano teacher. It was just great experience growing up there. Fantastic. But a chance to play with all these people that went into music from my generation mm -hmm. and the generation before. And they were all what we called legends. Like it was so cool to like you know, oh, wow, I got a chance to play with this person from North Battleford. So when we have these reunion bands, it's it's amazing watching who comes home. And you're like, wow, this is so cool. I can just play with you. Yeah, so, yeah it, it, it seems it seems like North uh, North Battleford really punches above its weight, doesn't it? Uh, it does, yeah, especially in the music community. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you look at Lisa Horning, who comes from there, right? Yeah, uh, like the Sukins, yeah. all, all those people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, I and, actually taught Paul in my last band. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny because he was so multi talented at that point. It's like, please go into music, like, right. you know, please. Like I, you didn't have to say a word; you knew he was going to do it. But to work with someone like that, um, it was just that was magic. Watching him come in and play all these instruments, like, and it was just like a kindred spirit. Like I play all right. the band instruments, right, and orchestra ones. I mean, other than don't ask me to play cello. Okay. No, cello, no. Guitar, no. Crash cymbals, never. <laughs> never. Never. Did it once. No, no. Okay. Never. So, um, yeah. It was, so, I mean, it was so much fun having those experiences and seeing Paul come along and being able to do exactly that again. It was right. just like, oh, yeah. That was so much fun. So, it's still, I still have a, a ton of them around here, right? With the, with the, I, the instruments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems, I mean, we only can get a little glimpse of your, of your thing, but we can see the con, the conscious there. We can see the, yep. the natural horn, all that. So. Yeah. Um, and then there's a stack of horns over, over here and my flute and trumpet are buried over here. Okay. And yeah. And I've sold off a lot of them too. When I quit teaching oh. band, it was like, why am I hanging on to a saxophone? Right. That's why I said to myself, all right. Like, do I really need the saxophone? Do I need three trumpets anymore? So, and now I go out band recruiting for St. John's music when we don't have this COVID thing. And so that's, it's been very handy because then I can play all the instruments for the students before we do their band recruiting. Right. And yeah. And 
you know, and from all those years of teaching band, it's really easy for me to tell you what instrument you'd be sure. good at playing. Sure. And, yeah. how, and how many years did you teach band and where? 15 years. 15 so years. I taught for about 15 years and I started off in Prince Albert and then I sort of marked my way around through. I taught for a year in Kenora and I taught. Oh my Kenora, God. Ontario. No, Saskatchewan. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Of course, of course. Because yeah. it's a very Ukrainian community. Yes. They named me. Yeah. They're talking about today. Arlene Shiplitsky. There we go. We changed my name. Even the music dealers wrote me my invoices to that. <laughs> but to teach marching band at 7.45 in the morning, I will never forget that. Sorry. No, I should never <laughs> teach marching band at 7.45 a.m. Right? Sh should anyone? No. Yeah. no, I don't think so. Because it was really ugly. And through the winter in a gym. Wow. And then I was in Churchbridge and taught in Humboldt. And then uh, and then I ended my career just taking a job in North Battleford for a year. I wanted to, I lived in Saskatoon mm -hmm. and I drove out and I would stay at my mom's just to make sure she was okay. She at that point lived about 25 minutes north of North Battleford okay. at Jackfish. So sure. and we enjoyed that. It was great because I would go see her, make sure she was good and then have a job and come home and play in the orchestra. But mm -hmm. I was finding that I loved teaching horn and I loved how I taught the horn was different than how I taught band. Oh, okay. In what way? And, and the only way I could switch was to quit teaching band and then just teach horn. And then when I go back and do band now, I can adapt the way I taught horn. Right. You know, right. Yeah. And then I've even morphed from there into the way I teach now. And that'll keep evolving too. Sure. And for me, especially like through COVID, my teaching style is changing quite a bit. Um, and it'll just keep growing. Well, and that's and that's what that's what great teachers do. They they keep learning, keep passing that on yeah. to the students. And your enthusiasm <laughs> is so infectious, Arlene. It's so Good. much fun. Good. And and um, I, I I love it at the symphony rehearsals. Um, you know, whenever I need a smile, I just talk to Arlene. And yeah. And how many years have you been in the symphony? I started in nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm coming twenty eight years, years, I guess. 28 years wow. yeah and it was it was a lark i actually i was actually getting ready for an armed forces audition and i just thought well i can get this ready and i worked on it over the summer i went for i can't believe i'm admitting this i went for one lesson that was it <laughs> and it was like a week and a half before the audition then i went home and practiced my butt off i did everything my horn teacher said and then it was actually two positions i won both of them oh fantastic and yeah, there were nine of us that showed up and I won both. They didn't tell me. So they made me go into the second round and that was very oh, embarrassing. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It was like, great. So I had no idea I'd won anything. And so I went through the second round. And yeah, the only thing I learned out of that experience is don't wear heels to an audition so they don't know that you're a female. That was it. Blind auditions. But was yeah, it already actually, blind back then? It was still blind. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And I that that was great because you played to this black screen and was wonderful you know i couldn't freak out too much it's a black screen yeah you know you can't see the other people on the other side anyway so. right yeah and, and over the years you've uh you've played with some great players carol's been there as long as that right she started in 93 so 93, i had another oh, one year person. later okay yeah so she started one year after me and then we've had this amazing row of of third and fourth horn players i mean we've had some people come in oh my gosh it's like i can't i sometimes i look at them and i go what are you doing here and then they play and it's like like thank you but oh, i'm so glad you're here because like you get a chance like our current horn section is to die for oh my gosh wow you know if you want to do concert stuck you know go right ahead I, this is <laughs> have, have i heard that before from you guys i'm not sure I, I think we tell you every single time we're in your presence i think I so think, and yeah. too, I think every, like, you know it's like if that word actually comes in you know but then i we should do that theory where you know we just actually say it once and then just let it perk that's right well it, it's it's on the list it's it's perking it's percolating it's perking. exactly yeah, yeah. exactly uh, Taryn, Taryn just chimed in. She said, Arlene, you're too kind. Stop. You rock. Um, so. <laughs> oh, oh, are you oh, kidding? This... No, it's so fun. Yeah. I mean, you heard it. That first rehearsal, oh. Rom's four. That's all I got to say. You, like, you four, uh, like the, the section. I mean, it's all my five years, the horns have been fantastic. And yeah. So it's just been a pleasure with you two and then then the others. And, and yeah. this last year as well. This It's just been it's been a treat, that's for sure. Well, Carol and I have had a blast playing together all these decades. It's I been bet. so much. Oh, 
oh yeah yeah the yeah. funny things we've done and yeah it's been really good and and to have someone like that sitting right here yeah. it's been an education in itself right yeah. like just the chance to be sitting beside one of canada's best lead horn players is just exactly uh, yeah just bliss. It's so true. So true. It was such she's a, not here and I can say that. I know. I know. She she politely uh, said she'd write a blog instead. Um, so so <laughs> yeah. Arlene gets to do all the talking, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. There's been some yeah. great, great comments. Lenora says amazing horn section and Marilyn says hi. And and so many oh, people cool. have said hi. And, and uh, it's oh, already good. 30 minutes have gone by. Arlene, this is, is it really? Oh my God, that's seven thirty up there. Yeah, I, can do that. <laughs> I don't need bifocals yet. Yay! <laughs> we're uh, Arlene and I were joking beforehand, where I said, "I'll just ask you a question. You can go on for a few hours if you wish." Um, but this has been a real treat. And um, before I go, I want to ask. Yep. I want to thank the uh, Saskatchewan Orchestral uh, Association for supporting all the content we do, and. Yeah. Um, any last words or horn jokes or anything that you'd love to to oh, part us with? No, I think, you know what, when you're sitting down, as I always say to you, you know, enjoy the horn section and look at the people back there. We're just these little blobs to the everyone in the audience and just enjoy. Know that back there, imagine what it would be like if you were sitting behind us because think about that sound that comes out to you that just sounds oh so beautiful and sometimes you go they're really not playing that loud it's like no 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 come sit behind us it'd be That's nice right. sometime if if anyone is brave enough to actually do that without being a singer because i feel bad for the poor singers every time we have them because yes i'm playing right into their legs purple goose but it's absolutely been blissful to sit on mm. that stage and look out and see these wonderful people cheering us on it's been a great great 28 years of doing that wow just, yeah no arlene, worries arlene you're such a treat and it's nice. uh it's uh it's just bringing so much smile so many smiles to my face over the past Good. half an hour and so great to see you and yeah, i'm sure the whole audience you. has loved it as well so thanks so much <laughs> And thanks okay. to the audience out there. Um, join yeah. us next week. We've got uh, singers coming because it's uh, Saskatoon Opera usually is June oh, yeah. month um, here in, in Saskatoon. And so we're going to have a lot of singers come through. So join us for that. But once again, great. Arlene, thanks so much. And have a no great problem. evening, Thank everyone. You. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>